Hello and welcome to Football Night in Chicago. I am Kenneth Davis and we're going to start off the show with tonight's top stories brought to you by Bally's Casino of Chicago. The Eagles and Devontae Smith have agreed to a massive contract extension. It is reportedly a three-year, $75 million deal with $51 million guaranteed. Former Bears offensive lineman Cody Whitehair has a new home, signing with the Las Vegas Raiders on a one-year deal. Whitehair played eight seasons with the Bears, starting 118. And another NFL star got big money today. Defensive tackle DeForest Buckner is re-upping with the Colts on a two-year, $46 million deal. Got my guy. You know, you see him right there, Alex Shapiro. As we go to the beat with Chevy Drive Chicago, we're just about 10 days from the NFL draft, much closer to Caleb Williams becoming a Chicago Bear and figuring out what the Bears will probably do with that number nine pick. Alex, mm -hmm. what do you think – Bears general manager uh, Brian Poles is going to do when it comes to that ninth picker. You, you think he's going to move up? You think he's going to move back? You think he's going to remain? Which you way know, do you think he's going to go? I don't know that Ryan Poles even knows what he's going to do yet because I think a lot depends on what happens in the early stages of that draft, right? If Marvin Harrison Jr. unexpectedly falls to like seven, even if he's there at six, you got to think he's going to pick up the phone and see what it's going to take to move up because you got to imagine he'd be interested in adding a player of Marvin Harrison Jr.'s caliber. If a player like Joe Alt, Roma Dunze, Malik Neighbors, if they're there at nine, you also got to imagine that Ryan Poles stays put and adds one of those elite players to make a huge, huge impact, right? Staying at nine and adding a top 10 pick player. That's like a a franchise cornerstone caliber player. But let's say the Bears go through their evaluation and none of those franchise cornerstone caliber players that, that they've identified are available, then I think we're in trade down territory. So I think there's three different avenues the Bears can take and there could still all be on the table. No, look, it's, it's just an opinion. But for you, Alex, would there be a trade down scenario where you would kind of feel like, whoa, these guys traded pretty far back and perhaps that's something that you wouldn't want them to do? Yeah, you know, I know the Buffalo Bills have come up in conversation a whole lot because, you know, they didn't re-sign Stephon Diggs. They, they traded away Stephon Diggs. Uh, Gabe Davis is gone, so they need a wide receiver. So, you know, people have said, oh, maybe the Bills want to trade up. But moving that far back, I mean, that's a long ways to go. So if the Bears can stay, you know, arbitrarily, and I'm just throwing a, a random number out, like within the top 15 picks. Mm -hmm. Again, like I said, now you're adding a player who is not only projecting to be a starter, but has probably some Pro Bowl upside, right? And the farther down you go, you're you're – removing the chances of hitting on one of those top tier guys. Right. And I know people really get enchanted by, Oh, but if they move this far back, then they can add a second and maybe a future fourth or whatever. And draft picks, draft picks, draft picks. And now we're using all these draft picks to fill all these different holes. But for me, there's something to be said about using fewer picks to add better players. Because it's better players and elite players that take teams on Super Bowl runs. And that is the ultimate goal, right? Winning Super Bowls. Um, so, yeah, there is a range, like I said, arbitrarily, maybe within the top 15 picks. Because th that's where you're adding, I mean, super legit talent. I want to shout out to our guy, Jimbo. Um, one thing, though, I have to say, Jimbo, of course, is a genius as you see him with trading up for Joe all genius Jimbo, right? They was probably should just start saying that now moving <laughs> forward. If you watch the latest episode of under center podcast, the three of us, Josh, Alex, and myself did mock drafts and Joe Alt was mentioned in that episode. So just go and check that out. All right. Usually if you haven't watched the linear version of football night in Chicago, which go back on Wednesday, tomorrow, I'll be here tomorrow and Friday. Um, as of right now, maybe things could change. Um, Alex usually does a studs and duds. All right. So we're going to bring that over here to the digital and set it up for my guy, Alex, to give us in this upcoming draft, who are his studs? We're just, we're studalicious today. All right. We're just studs. only studs. Only studs we're, today. 
we are we are ramping up for summer which followers of the show will know it's it's good vibes only season so we're we're doing away with the duds we're in good vibes only season only focusing on studs and we're going to focus on studs around the number nine pick i'm not saying that these players are necessarily going to be picked at number nine but in that range and i have found a guy for the bears at each of their positions of need in my mind and we're going to start right now with wide receiver we just got done talking about marvin harrison jr being a stud I don't think Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be there for the Bears at nine. They're going to have to move up to grab him. So I went with the dude, Roma Dunze. And I know Malik Neighbors is super popular, and Malik Neighbors is an incredible playmaker. But for me, Roma Dunze is the best deep threat of the quote-unquote big three wide receivers. Unbelievable contested catch guy. And he fits exactly what the Bears need, right? Okay, so... Keenan Allen and DJ Moore are both there. You're probably thinking, why do the Bears need a third wide receiver? Why do they need to spend a top 10 pick on a wide receiver? It's a luxury. And honestly, you're not wrong. It is a luxury to have three dynamite wide receivers. But what Roma Dunze does is he allows DJ Moore and Keenan Allen to both do what they do best, right? DJ Moore is pretty much great at whatever the Bears ask him to do. But his specialty is working that intermediate part of the field where you can catch the ball with a little space, rack up the yak. Keenan Allen, he's solid out wide in the slot, but like he's really good in the slot where he can use his size. He can use his unbelievable uh, route running to create separation. And Jerome Adunze, he's a dude who primarily plays outside. So Keenan Allen can move to the slot in three wide receiver sets. And he's this excellent deep ball threat who can take the top off of defense make a defense respect his deep playability. And what does that do? That opens up the middle of the field for DJ Moore. I mean, it just all adds up about how he could be an incredible fit. And here's the other thing. He future proof proofs that room, right? Keenan Allen's 32. He's got a few years left. Not going to be there forever. Bears want a playmaker who can be there for the duration of Caleb Williams career. If Roma Dunze is there learning behind Keenan Allen, learning behind DJ Moore, then it's his turn to, to, to carry the torch, to be the guy. He can be the guy. All right, I've talked a lot about Roma Dunze. I just want to run, rattle some numbers off because they are so impressive. This is from 2023. Oh, wait. I might have lost them. 2023. Go ahead. I did lose them. He led the league off the top of my head because I lost my numbers here. He led the, oh, no, no, I got him. I got him. Okay, 2023, among wide receivers with 100 targets, 1,639 yards, led the nation. 74 first downs, led the nation. 21 contested catches, led the nation. 75% contested catch rate, led the nation. His 15.5 average depth of target, that was second. So he's getting the ball way downfield. 13 touchdowns, tied for fourth. 3.2% drop rate. He's almost never dropping the ball. Sixth in the nation. That collection of numbers of production of data is unparalleled. Unparalleled. He's the real deal. I mean, I got a question for you real quick. Shout out, of course, my girl, Patty, Kevin, and Mike, and badass Warthog. Warthog has something to say about the picks that the Bears, in his opinion, should go quality over quantity. What would you say to that, Alex, in your opinion? I agree. That, 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 that's kind of what I'm getting at. You know, the, the quality of the player you're getting at nine is different from the quality of play you're going to get at 18 and, you know, let's just say adding 45 or whatever. If the Bears want to turn the page from rebuilders to serious contenders, they need great players not a handful of good players, right? They have filled a lot of holes. Ryan Poles deserves a lot of credit for doing a good job of filling these holes. Linebacker unit looks great with Tremaine Edmonds and TJ Walker. They're set at running back with Khalil Herbert, Roshan Johnson, and now DeAndre Swift. Uh, You have Darnell Wright at right tackle. Braxton Jones is solid at left tackle, and I know we're going to talk about adding a left tackle and how that would help. Um. Kevin Byard at safety, Jaquan Brisker at safety. They're totally set at tight end and cornerback with all the talent there, right? So, so it's it's taken some time, but they've they've filled, plugged those holes. 
the amount of holes they need to fill is smaller and smaller. So you want to take these quality picks to add quality players into those holes. And the Bears can take a huge step by adding really, really good players. All right. Let's get back to your studs. All right. Um, let's go with a left tackle. And it's not your guy, Joe Alt, because Jimbo is right. If the Bears want to grab Joe Alt, I think they're going to have to trade up to get him. I don't think he's going to be there at number nine. You know, there's all this talk about run on quarterbacks, run on wide receivers. Left tackle is still a position of need for like every pretty much team in the NFL, right? That's a huge, huge premium position. So I don't think Joel going to be there. So I'm not going to talk about Joel. I'm going to talk about Olu Fashanu. And I know, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know <laughs> Kenneth was <laughs> not feeling Feeling my pick of Olu Fashanu. I know we trade him back. Podcast. I know we better be trading back if we get <laughs> Olu Fashanu. Nine. This is this is a stud around nine. Maybe uh -huh. not necessarily uh -huh. right at number nine. <laughs> Joe Alt's a wonderful player, and he's going to be a plug and play. As you see, my man Jimbo was telling a decade, Alex, a decade. Not absolutely yeah, Jimbo, right. He was for he brought up Fashanu on today's episode. We, we I did, I did. There. But again, I don't think he's going to be there at nine. Fashanu has a better chance of being there at nine or potentially if the Bears move back a few spots. Yeah, and Fashanu could look to be the better pass protector. Now, there are some questions about like the run blocking not being quite as great as the pass blocking. And he, you know, some people don't think he's got the mean streak that, you know, a lot of teams look for in a left tackle. But Fashanu, uh, it's all about Caleb Williams, right? This is an X factor for me played ball with Caleb Williams in high school that gives Caleb Williams a familiar face. And according to PFF, never gave up a sack at Penn State. 1,347 pass rush snaps or pass pro snaps never gave up a sack. That is unbelievable. Uh, he's also got great awareness. You can tell, you know, something the Bears struggled with a little bit was picking up stunts. Um, especially between Braxton Jones and Cody Whitehair. Braxton Jones is rookie you put season. Cody Whitehair. Yeah. Put, put no. Cody Whitehair. We're talking stunts. It, it, it got a little bit better. It got a little bit better last year, but in 2022, it was a struggle. I mean, mm. teams knew throw a stunt to that left side. We're pretty much getting home. Fashionu's solid at that. He's got the recognition. He's got the awareness to hand that off and handle that. So Fashanu, I think, is in play. Uh, as a left tackle, like I said, I think Braxton Jones is solid. I don't think he gets enough credit for him being a reliable left tackle who can get the job done. Fashanu, though, you know, improves the unit. Now Braxton Jones can be a backup, or at least there's like really solid competition for that spot. If they're if they're drafting Fashanu in the first round, he's going to be the starter. Uh, but right, I mean, last year when Braxton Jones went down with an injury, Larry Borm had to come in and he struggled. So the depth of that unit needs to improve. So Fashanu not only upgrades the starting unit, now Braxton Jones is upgrading the backup unit. That's going to help Caleb Williams a ton. All right. Who you got next? All right. I got, uh, let's go defensive tackle. And I know, again, people are going to have thoughts about the Bears drafting a defensive tackle in the first round after spending two high picks to draft Jervon Dexter and uh, Zach Pickens last season. But the fact of the matter is, Bears need to fill the hole that was created by Justin Jones leaving for Arizona this offseason, right? Whether or not Jervon Dexter is ready to become the starter. Right now, you only got Zach Pickens, Andrew Billings, and Byron Cowart uh, in there. I don't think Byron Cowart is going to be pushing for big-time snaps. Billings, he's a nose tackle. He's not filling in at three-tech. Zach Pickens, in his limited time, seemed to look better at nose tackle at times so they're gonna need a three tech and johnny newton is the stud i realize i never even mentioned his name johnny newton is a guy who can not only be a run stuffer which is what the bears need to do on first and second down right the bears defense is predicated on stopping the run early and then letting that pass rush take over he is that run stuffer but he's also a big time backfield pass uh pass disruptor Okay, I got some more numbers for you. You know I love the numbers. Eight sacks last season, tied for first among interior defensive linemen. 43 total pressures, tied for second per PFF, and 
15.4% pass rush win rate tied for eighth among interior linemen with at least a hundred pass rush snaps. Newton won the big 10 defensive player of the year. He can come in and he can be that backfield disruptor that the bears need. The bears need more backfield disruptors. I don't think it matters if it comes from the edge or from the interior and the bears might prefer it come from the interior because they want that pass rusher like right in the quarterback's face, right? You got Montez sweat pushing them up the pocket from the side. And now you got Johnny Newton coming right in your face. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So Johnny Newton, again, is he going to be the pick at nine? No, nah, maybe they move back and grab Johnny. Maybe they move back. Yeah. Maybe they move back and get Johnny. Newton. Yeah. Go ahead. Dr. Truth asked a question. He said, Olu has a tiny hands. I've never heard of that as an issue for a tackle, only arm length. Are you too worried about his small hands at left tackle? It's notable. It's weird because he has, he's a big guy, right? He's got the arm length that you want and he's got the size that you want, but then his hands are kind of small. Uh, I'm not concerned. I, I don't get super caught up with the measurables when the tape shows me he's a fine player, you know? And Olu Fashanu at Penn State was a really good player. With his small hands, uh, it's not like he was going against slouches in the Big Ten. Uh, oh, not you giving the Big Ten props. <laughs> yeah, me giving the Big Ten props. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, Dr. Truth, um, it depends on where he gets drafted. No, I don't think it's an issue. I just wouldn't like him at number nine, but that's a Davis thing. Alex, who you got up next, my guy? I, I want to know why you don't want Foshnu at number nine, to be honest, because I know you were you were a big Foshnu dude for a while, and you've been talking about how the Bears need a left tackle. Yeah, I was last year, and he went back. And if you don't know, I'm the president of the Drew Aller fan club, so I actually watched a lot of Penn State this year. Um, so there were times where power was leveraged against him. Um, and I, I didn't see the growth, Alex, to be honest with you. I thought you think of a player that is where the Bears were selecting last year that was looked at as per, a, perhaps a prospect they were going to bring in, deciding to return to school. You think you're going to see growth to a degree. Now, the same could be said about Caleb Williams. You know what I'm saying? It, it, but I guess I guess the, the trick is that Caleb had that crazy year at the Heisman year and did take it Spencer Rattler's job at Oklahoma. But for me, it's just. At number nine, I, I feel like you may be overdrafting him, but if he's their guy, that's their business, and they can easily prove me wrong by going with whoever their guy is. Yeah. No, it'll be interesting. It's going to be really interesting to, to hear how it plays out. Um, and I see somebody saying that Montez Sweat said uh, Jervon will have a breakout season. That's what the Bears want. I don't think that precludes, again, whether or not the Bears believe he's ready to be the starter, I don't think it precludes them from drafting a three-tech because the Bears want to come at you in waves, right? They don't want Jervon Dexter playing 70, 80% of the snaps because they want Jervon Dexter to be fresh in the fourth quarter. They want a nice rotation so that everybody is super fresh for the entirety of the game, for the entirety of the season. Best defensive lines have two units. The Bears need to get on that two-unit level. That part. Um, yeah, that part right there, that part. And the interesting thing when you say that, that's where depth as far as youth kind of starts. You may be able to find a guy that's out there in the streets that you bring in as a one trick pony, but that's where you're going to start because you're right. You're, you're going to have to have fresh bodies coming on that defensive line to keep those defensive backs going the way that they need to be going. So that's a great point by you, Alex. All right. Thanks, Kenneth. All right. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh. Let me clear something up real quick, all right? Oh. The in or out on Braxton Jones, because Pat is saying that I'm a flip-flopper. Pay closer attention to what I'm saying. If the Bears stick with Braxton Jones, I'm not going to be upset about it. Can they improve? Yes. And also the value of their that improvement. Now, if there's a player that's a little bit better than Braxton, no, keep Braxton. But if Joe Alt is there, yeah, I'm going to go and get Joe Alt. So just because you may like a player and someone disagrees or doesn't see it exactly the same way, don't classify it as flip flop and be accurate yeah. with what no, you, you haven't. You haven't been flip flopping. You've been. You've been. I'm not, it's all right. I, 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 Warhol got him for me. And, <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So last stud, we are talking defensive end, and uh, this is a pick just because we've spoken about Jared Verse so much on this show and spoken about Jared verse so much on the Intercetter podcast. I wanted to mix it up a little bit. So I'm bringing it back a guy who I talked about a long time ago. That's Latu Latu. 
who again is not necessarily you know slated on big boards out there to go at number nine but who I believe is an excellent defensive end who would help the Bears a whole heck of a lot. Now, what Laatu Latu does is he's an incredible technician who <laughs> repeatedly beats offensive linemen to rack up crazy sacks. Let's see if I got the numbers on him. I do. Okay. 26.2% pass rush win rate. Number two in the country among edge rushers with at least 100 pass rush snaps last year. Over his last two seasons, he had 23 and a half sacks, 34 TFL, and five forced fumbles. I mean, that kind of production, that just plays, you know? And, and you can see how he does it, and I'm not worried about that not the translating oh, to I'm the sorry, NFL. Apologize. My no. only I'm, mm -hmm. the ahead. neck issue is something uh, Truth says he's so damn – he is. Like, when you see him move, it's like that – it's, I don't want to say slippery because it's slippery kind of seems like you're trying to evade, but it's just, it's really technically sound. And there is a certain kind of, there's a, a, a rhythm, I think is a proper, proper way for me to say it, a rhythm that he moves with. That's just, just kind of like, oh, I, I like, like he would be higher for me if he didn't have the neck. And again, the neck may be fine. And I hope it's fine for his career going forward, but that, that's scary to know that in a season or two, you may, something could happen. And that's just a fear of yeah. mine when yeah. we're talking about him. Absolutely. The, the medicals is what is pushing him down draft boards. Mm -hmm. You know, it, these public draft boards that we all see. Um, if it wasn't for that, he would be a much more highly touted player, I'm sure. So this is going to come down to the Bears information. If they think the medicals are okay and, and good and they can draft him, I think he's in play. But if there's something that's a red flag for them, then maybe he's not on their draft board, right? We know that the Bears will take, or teams, you know, not just the Bears, but teams will take players off their draft board. It doesn't matter if they're a quote-unquote good value for their for their draft slot, where they're at. They just want, they're going to ignore that they're there. So if they are too concerned, overly concerned about the medicals, you can probably take Latu off the board. I don't know what the Bears think about the medicals. I haven't seen the actual stuff, but if he's okay and if they say mm -hmm. he's good to go, I think he's in play. And man, Latu and Montez Sweat now coming at you, Pincer. That's yeah. that's lookout status. Yeah, and I mean, and then let alone if you get something from Javon Dexter, if he does have a season like that, when you're talking about that upfront penetration from the, again going back to our interview with uh, Dwight Freeney saying he would have preferred having a dominant three tech when he was in Indy. Um, great stuff, Alex. Before we wrap up today's show, let's take a look at tonight's best bet presented by Fanatic Sportsbook. The current odds for the number nine overall pick in the NFL draft, which the Bears currently hold on to, no surprise. The favorite, of course, is Roman Dunze at plus 250, followed by two edge rushers, Jared Verse and Dallas Turner. If the Bears do trade out, J.J. McCarthy sits at plus 1,200. Your thoughts of those odds, Alex, before we jump up out of here, my guy. Uh, it makes a whole lot of sense. You know, it, I think the only reason Dallas Turner is plus 575 is because maybe the odds makers think he's off the board already. If JJ McCarthy is still on the board, that probably means a lot of players the Bears want are not on the board, right? <laughs> because that run on quarterbacks didn't necessarily happen of three quarterbacks going. Um, so if JJ McCarthy is still there, then I think Bears are in big time trade down potential. I want to thank Alex Shapiro. Great job by Joe today. Excellent by everybody in the, in, the, in the chat. Please, everyone, stay safe. Thanks for watching Football Night in Chicago. I will be back here tomorrow. Have a great evening.